Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are almost at the end of this course, uh, we are just at lecture number 39. So, towards the end I thought we will uh, study some of these uh, modern control techniques, uh, for especially for the nonlinear control agent uh, philosophy. One of that happens to be integrated uh, integrator backstepping and something uh, on that we are going to study today actually. Towards the end of this lecture I will also talk about linear quadratic observer which essentially leads towards uh, Kermal filter and all that actually. Yeah, these two are dis uh, not related topics, I just uh, put together because, uh, because of uh, like uh, time is sufficient to discuss both the things today actually. All right, so, so philosophy of nonlinear control design using Lyapunov theory is something like this, because this backstepping design uses uh, Lyapunov theory extensively. So, what is the generic philosophy? Suppose somebody wants to use uh, Lyapunov theory for uh, control design, then what is the idea there actually? Something is uh, the idea is something like this. Let us say you have a nonlinear system x dot is f of x u, where you want to design a control u in the state feedback form, which is like phi of x. So, u has to be as a function of x phi of x, such that this once you put it back into the system dynamics, that is x dot is f of x and then phi of x, that system closed loop system dynamics would be asymptotically stable. I mean that is the ultimate uh, objective for uh, Lyapunov based uh, control theory actually. So, what is the idea there? I mean how do you kind of make sure that that happens actually? Okay. So, the idea here is first you choose a positive definite function v 1 let us say and make sure, uh, make sure that v 1 dot is less than equal to negative of v 2, where v 2 is a positive definite function. And uh, remember these are all like sufficiency conditions and all that. So, you will not be operating in an optimal way, but you will be a, operating in a on a conservative way basically, well, that that is ok. So, what you what you essentially do is we select a Lyapunov function v 1 of x and make sure that v 1 dot of x which is uh, once you take v 1 dot it is related to the system dynamics anyway. So, this v 1 dot of x would be less than equal to minus uh, v 2 of x where v 2 itself is a positive definite function. So, negative of v 2 is a negative definite function. So, you want to make sure that v 1 dot is less than equal to another negative definite function that way. So, that is the whole whole idea design idea basically. So, let us see a small example before talking in lot more formal theory and things like that. So, you, this is a simple scalar uh, problem where x dot is a x square minus a x minus x cube plus u ok. And we want to design a state feedback control u so that the closed loop system is asymptotically stable that is the objective actually. So, we have to select a v 1 first. So, let us uh, v 1 we will see naturally select a quadratic function half of x square. So, v 1 dot happens to be x times x dot ok obviously, because del v, del v 1 by del x is, is x times uh, x dot and x dot is the system dynamics what you see here. So, we put it back here. So, essentially it leads to v 1 dot is something like this. Now, this v 1 dot has to be less than equal to negative of a positive definite function. Okay, so, that, so, we have to select another v 2 like that. So, let us say select v 2 is, is x square basically let us say just uh, I mean you can select any positive definite function for say this is just one of those selections. And we want to make sure that this inequality is valid actually. Okay, so, v 1 dot uh, is less than equal to negative of v 2. So, if you put v 1 dot is this expression. So, this expression is less than equal to negative of x square. So, then from there you want to solve for a controller. Well, that means, uh, this uh, this x u is less than equal to this uh, this uh, expression and uh, equal to sign will also is a valid thing. So, we will take equal to actually and then make sure that u is equal to that. Okay. So, we cancel out x in both sides, 1 x will go from both sides and then we have uh, u is in minus x plus x u minus x a x square. So, is this control good or bad? I mean, naturally it is good because we have made sure that v 1 dot is, is negative definite function anyway. But still just to cross check about it, you just put it back this controller back into the system dynamics and then try to analyze what is going on there. So, if you put this uh, this system dynamics is a x square minus x cube 
plus u. So, plus u whatever u are getting will put it back. So, my x square minus x u plus u, u is that, that portion actually. This portion is, is like plus u. Okay. So, that is, that is uh, what you do, but then once you put it back, uh, the, these two these two are cancelled out okay. and plus x q minus x q also cancels out and you are left out with x dot is minus x actually. So, an x dot is minus x is certainly a, a, a linear system dynamics so actually uh, and obviously, because the, the Eisen value is minus 1, obviously the system is asymptotically stable. In fact, it is globally asymptotically stable. Okay. So, that is uh, because it is a linear system dynamics ultimately, so it does not depend on initial condition, it is straightly straight away from Eisen values you can say it is globally asymptotically stable. So, that is the advantage here actually. So, you, you design a controller, it is a nonlinear controller in such a way that the closed loop system becomes globally asymptotically stable. But what is the problem with that? There is also a problem, also remember that uh, this V1 and V2 and Lyapunov theory, these are all like uh, sufficiency conditions and all that. So, once you use that, the region can be actually conservative and uh, here it is actually a conservative region primarily because this uh, let us assume that uh, okay, if you go back to this, this negative x q, x dot is minus x q is actually a stabilizing term that is that is also like uh, easy to see. For example, uh, any odd power of uh, like a scalar function if I take any odd power of x is this is a stabilizing thing with a negative sign. For example, let us say x dot equal to minus x q that to that one if you are talking. Then corresponding to that let us say Lyapunov function if you if you say just half uh, x square then v dot happens to be x x dot this is nothing but x times uh, minus uh, x q. So, it is negative of x fourth. So, it is actually a negative definite function. Okay. So, any odd power of x uh, with a negative sign here will be actually a stabilizing term. So, but that what happens here is unnecessarily we have actually uh, cancelled that out. So, this controller uh, actually tries to cancel out the, the good part of it also basically. So, we do not want that normally. So, how do you do uh, how do you avoid that? So, let us be um, because this is a small problem we should be able to try uh, analyze this a uh, little bit more just by looking at the equations and all. So, let us see we, we select something like V 2. I mean probably our V2 selection was wrong. So, we will we'll revise this V2 selection and tell okay, let us consider V2 as x square plus x fourth instead. This is also a positive definite function by the way. Now, if you go back to this inequality again that V1 dot is negative less than I mean negative uh, less than equal to negative of V2 x, then uh, the same analysis will tell that u is instead like that. And again you put it back and then plus a uh, minus x fourth and minus x fourth will, will get cancelled out from both sides and you will be left out with that term actually. Okay. And here you will be able to I mean cancel 1 x and all that actually. Okay. So, anyway, so that is uh, that is what will happen here actually. So, you will, will be like this. Again you go back and try to analyze what is the closed loop uh, system. The next dot is, is like this now because that is that is my u. Okay. In, in this case this is my u now okay, negative of u probably. Oh sorry this is plus, plus u. Okay. Okay, this is this is our system dynamics actually. So we, we have to go go back to this system dynamics and then tell this is plus u here. So we put it uh, this u, whatever u we are getting here, we will put it back and then try to see that x dot is instead minus a q minus x. So we are able to preserve this this beneficial nonlinearity okay, by selecting a different v2. So, that is that's the message here. So, the design is not uh, just, just unique design. So, it is subject to different different uh, selection of V2, V1 and all. You will end up with different controllers actually. But all of them will be a, will be able to do the job and all of them will have some degree of robustness also because these are all sufficiency conditions and all robustness also comes into picture. Now, let us see how it is. Uh, so, is, uh, suppose we go back to that uh, that initial selection, let us say V 2 whatever we selected initially is x square. So, we will go back to that selection and with that selection our closed loop system became something like x dot equal to minus x. But this x dot equal to minus x only if the parameter a is accurately known. Remember that this is this entire thing, this, uh, pro this process of uh, cancellation and all that okay, what we did here. Okay. Uh, Okay, this this x square and x square, whatever this this x square 
and this a x square okay, got cancelled out assuming that the a is known perfectly. Okay, but if a is not known perfectly then this a will be different from what is used in the controller that a will be different and hence you will not be able to cancel out. So, in that situation you will have additional term okay, okay, subject to this so this is not no more x dot is minus x it will, like, it will be x dot equal to minus x plus an additional term with, a, with x square actually. Okay, so and plus x square is certainly a destabilizing term pro, pro, I, mean, as, uh, uh, I mean depending on this uh, how powerful is this a bar minus a is actually okay, that means how much inaccuracy is, is there. Now, no matter whatever is the inaccuracy now because it is no more x dot is minus x this suddenly this, uh, this global stability is gone and we can only conclude local stability because uh, globally this is no more valid actually okay. one is stabilizing term other is destabilizing. So, obviously global, th global thing is not there actually. However, if you make V2 sufficiently powerful that means V2 is large and large and things like that then obviously the control will also get, take, get more and more large I mean powerful basically. So, essentially what you what you are telling is even in the presence of uncertainty like this the, the design can be robust actually. Okay, because this term will, will not be that prominent at all actually. In the, if your V2 is very powerful, then V1 dot is minus of V2x anyway. Okay. So, because that term being very high quantity and things like that, this will uh, this will lead to robust control actually. So, that is the whole idea why this uh, this Lyapunov theory based uh, controllers are typically robust actually. Okay. All right. So, with that much in the background, let us study about this uh, this integrator backstepping method and then uh, this is generalization of this concept what we just discussed actually. So, for here we need the system dynamics in a, in a typical form and for that form we will start with a simplified form of that version and this is the I mean towards end of this, uh, this topic we will see this is like what is called strict feedback system and all that actually, but this is just one subset of that. So, what you are telling here is uh, let, let x be n dimensional state, okay. let uh, xi be also a state okay, where xi dot is simply u. Okay. So, x dot is f of x plus x g of x times xi and xi dot is simply u actually, xi is a scalar, as remember xi and u both are scalars actually. So, if the system dynamics is given in this form, okay, then I can think of using uh, I mean this backstepping idea and all that. So, remember that, that uh, these both together are, con are the state vectors actually that means uh, x and xi together will define the states of the system. Okay. So, obviously the states of the system will be n plus 1 actually okay. and where is this uh, this pops up and things like that probably if you see this any system dynamics in control if I inform already and you want to incorporate uh, let us say actuator dynamics also. Then uh, this is the original control variable, but this part will be actual dynamics. You want to see the total system that way, then it will it will pop up something like this actually. Okay, so this is uh, these are not very unrealistic problems in that sense basically. So here here you are talking about uh, single input, and the control is uh, scalar, and the 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 xi state is also scalar anyway. So that's the form that you are talking. So what are the assumptions? Assumption is first is f and g are both smooth. Okay. That means the derivatives are also continuous. F of f of zero is zero. Whatever the f of zero you are talking here is should be zero. And if you consider this j as a as a control input to this particular state, the first part first part of the equation j acts as a control variable. So if you if you consider that, okay, then we assume that there exists a feedback controller already in the form of j uh, equal to phi of x, where phi of zero is zero. Okay, so, that, uh, that means the assuming this is a control variable, we have already designed a controller in uh, appropriately. I mean, so what does that mean? Xi is already designed as a function of x, where phi of 0 is 0. Okay. Because it is a stabilizing controller, it also has a Lyapunov function with that. Okay. So, there exists a Lyapunov function V1, such that V1 dot, which happens to be like this, like del V by del V1 by del x into x dot. So, x dot is like that anyway. Right. So, that is less than equal to certain negative of V a of x okay, where V a V a is a positive definite function. That means, all that you are telling is first part let us consider is a, is a separate problem okay, for which xi is a control variable and that this xi is actually already designed as a state feedback form with all good behavior basically. Okay. So, the, but in a given problem we need to we need to design this xi also basically that way. Okay. 
And as I told, this backstepping design is, is kind of very popular for uh, for incorporating actual dynamics into the system and all that. Actually, so anyway. So this uh, this is the assumption here. Now, what we want to do? Now, we want to design a U. Okay, you can think of that as as input to the actuator probably, so that the overall system remains as a stable actually. Okay, so that is that's the problem here actually. Okay, so let us see how do you do that, the, but observation let us say one, one important observation before you move further. Let us consider what happens when x is already equal to 0, x has gone to let us say x equal to 0 has already achieved, uh, uh, okay, then what happens. Now, remember phi of x is, if by definition phi of 0 is 0 anyway, okay. that is what that is how this xi, this xi is already designed. So, when x equal to 0, then uh, then phi of 0 is 0, that means i is also 0, okay. so this part is 0 anyway, okay. and then f of 0 is 0 by assumption. Okay. So, x dot becomes 0, so no, right. So, when x goes to 0, x dot is already 0, so that is that is that is fine actually. So, the, the system will go to equilibrium condition and it will stay there, okay. that is that, that is more important actually. So, that is not a problem. But then the problem happens in the other way around. Like what happens? Uh, okay, when x goes to zero, nothing, not a big problem actually. But what if uh, this j goes to zero? Okay, when j goes to zero, this this uh, this system dynamics, the first part of the system dynamics is almost become some homogeneous dynamics actually. Okay, j can go to zero, so this part is not there. But x dot is f of x. That that system has no guarantee. Then that x will go to zero. That system dynamics is homogeneous dynamics. The, I mean the only in the closed loop sense x will go to 0, that is, that is how the guarantee is already there, that is we have already designed a feedback control of the for that behavior, but for the homogeneous system there is no guarantee actually. That means, uh, when xi goes to 0, we are not very sure that whether x will go to 0 or not actually, but that is not that is not allowed actually, because the, our aim, our total aim, the, the final aim is to make sure that x goes to 0 also basically. So, how do you do that? Okay, so, that is that is that is the core problem actually. Okay. So, for that we need to do some algebraic manipulation as follows. Okay. So, let us see what we do there. So, for this uh, this particular system dynamics, the first part of it, it contain only this part f of x plus g of x times j. So, now let us add and subtract these two terms actually. So, this will add g of x times phi of x and subtract g of x times phi of x. Okay. When you do this operation, okay, let us uh, let us consider this this part of it, we will just keep it. Okay. Remember, this phi of x is the same phi of x that you are talking actually here. The e is already designed in the, in the the form of phi of x actually. So, it's just an algebraic uh, manipulation sort of actually. Okay. Uh, so, what you, what you are doing here? So, we are keeping this part of it here, and then uh, this this part and that part will combine. Okay, and then tell okay this is uh, this is what will happen actually. So, g of x times phi of x plus g of x times uh, zeta minus phi of x. Obviously, we are not changing anything here. I mean the, the system dynamics uh, we are just um, I mean playing around with a little algebra actually, but without altering the system dynamics. Now, with this change of now this j minus phi of x let me define it something like a new variable z actually. Okay. So, I am just defining that for, for math, math simplicity sort of thing. Once I do this, this definition z then uh, the system dynamics is nothing but that f of x plus g of x times phi of x plus g of x times z actually. Now, what actually earlier when zeta goes to I mean this xi went to 0 then we had a problem, but what if the same problem uh, is there or not. Okay. When you see this system dynamics in this way that means, when when z goes to 0 this system is no more like only f of x, this system is f of x plus g of x times phi of x and phi of x is designed very appropriately already basically. That means, when z goes to 0 this system dynamics is no more an a purely open loop system dynamics, it is actually a closed loop system dynamics and hence this is asymptotically stable anyway. So, x will go to 0. So, the problem that we had that when xi goes to 0, x will not go to 0 in general, that does not happen when z goes to 0. When z goes to 0, x is bound to I mean supposed to go to 0 basically. So, that problem will be overcome that way basically. Now, how do you do further algebra? Because we have to put to put it into this form. That form has to be there actually anyway. So let's analyze this uh, this z actually. Z is uh, by definition z minus phi of x. So we put it z dot is z dot minus phi dot. So we put z dot is nothing but u. Okay. So this z dot is nothing but u minus phi dot actually. Okay. So we have this uh, system dynamics like this modified system dynamics in this form. 
okay. Where z dot is nothing but v, v is this, this artificial control variable that I am interpreting that u minus phi dot I am defining as v and interpreting that okay z dot is nothing but v actually. So, if you see this system dynamics, okay, now it appears in the sim similar form that we, we started with actually. Okay. So, this, this form is nothing but something plus g of x times z and then the next one is z dot is v. So, this system is equivalent to the original system actually. Okay, so, only the only problem is instead of I mean this phi is used in the form of phi dot actually. Okay. So, and phi dot can be computable and that means del phi by del x into x dot and x dot is available anyway. So, that is the way you compute phi dot. So, what is going on in a block diagram sense? This is the original system dynamics, what we started with u and then integrate it goes to see if you see this u, if you integrate it is zeta, yes, sorry, zi. So, that is what it would happens here. Okay. If I have u integrate, you will get xi, then it multiplied by g of x, I get g of x times xi and then this feedback operates that way actually. Okay. So, what you see here is f of x plus g of x times xi. Okay. So, that is uh, that is x dot. Okay. So, that is how it happens, but what you are doing here is first of all, we are putting a, a g times phi here in this loop. And for that, for that reason, we have to introduce a negative phi of x, phi of x here. But we don't stop here. This phi of this phi of x is really not introduced here. It is introduced uh, once one block before that, and because of that, we have to introduce phi dot instead, no, negative of phi dot. Instead of phi of x, it is introduced as negative of phi dot x actually. So phi to phi dot is actually back backwards actually. So whatever is integrated, that uh, that signal flows forward whatever is differentiated that signal flows backward and that is why it is called back stepping actually. So, you are just uh, stepping back in the block diagram one time and then interpret into, uh, I mean this uh, interpreting that u minus phi dot sort of thing because of because of this algebra basically. Okay. Okay, this entire thing is borrowed from, from this book and uh, if anybody interested you can they can see this book also, this is a good book I think. All right. So, this uh, integrator backstepping, now we have to uh, I mean see that how do you design this v of x and things like that. Now, we are talking about uh, this system dynamics, remember that. So, how do you do that? So, let us start with this uh, v of x, uh, now we have to define a Lyapunov function inclusive of z. Okay. So, we will define something like v 1 of x plus half z square sort of thing. So, v dot is nothing but del v 1 by del x uh, times x dot and x dot is all that because x dot is, is what, we de, what we derived actually. So, the entire expression will put it back and once you put the entire expression this, this uh, plus this uh, z times z dot. So, this, this term will give us z times z dot and z dot is nothing but v. Okay. So, this z dot is v that is what we will put here actually. Okay. So, that is how we, we will end up here and so, but this part of the system I mean this part of the algebra is nothing but negative of v of x that is what it is all we are assuming that is already already designed that way. So, this is this is available to us actually right uh, by the by the the way we started with we started that okay this i is already designed with a associated Lyapunov function which satisfies this in this inequality. So, v a is available to us. So, we use that okay. So, this is this is nothing but less than equal to v a of x. So, we keep this part is less than equal to v a of x. Now, if you see this part, the, this one and that one together sort of thing and that is uh, that is what we will we will combine actually. Okay. So, then once you combine these two part, okay, this, uh, this, this first part and this, this, exp this term and then you have as a z times v actually. Okay. So, when you combine these two term, we will end, we'll end up with this negative v of x here that is already available to us anyway plus this additional term actually. Remember z is common to both actually. So, I can I can take out z actually. Okay. So, that is what happens here. Now, the question here is how do you make sure, how do you design a v such that this entire thing is negative definite that is that is the whole point actually. So, when you see something like this the, the very natural the idea that comes to mind is okay, let me design a v this way. So, I will cancel out this term and whatever is left out I will it will generate something like a negative k times z square where k is positive. So, naturally I will select a v which is negative of this quantity okay, minus k z. 
so that when minus k z is left out here, it will generate a minus k z square term actually. Okay. So, what is the whole idea? So, now V dot turns out to be less than equal to a negative definite function that is already available minus k z square, okay, which is neg which is also negative kind of uh, semi definite and all that actually. Okay. Because if you, if you see the total, uh, okay. Uh, so, it, if you see the total things uh, like so total system dynamics, the entire Lyapunov function must contain both x as well as z actually, right? Then only the system dynamics we can we can conclude something actually. Okay. Because any part is left out, we will have a negative semi definite uh, sort of idea there. So, when you see this uh, this entire function, the first part assures that it is negative definite for the first part of the system dynamics. Okay, and the second part will assure that it is also negative kind of semi definite for the second part. So, combine the combinedly together sort of thing they will have a negative definite function for the for the bigger system total system actually. So, that is the way it will have a negative definiteness actually. Okay. All right, so, so whole idea what is that actually? Now, the, the whole idea is V turns out to be like this and V is also known to us already V by definition is u minus phi dot and phi dot is anyway available. So, using all that I will be able to extract a u basically. Okay. So, if v is already u minus phi dot, so I will and phi dot uh, mean that that expression is available to us anyway, because v is already v is designed like that. So, that is equal to that and phi dot is anyway there. So, u equal to phi dot minus that and phi dot is, is like this already there actually. So, that is how we, we design the control u basically. Okay. So, but also note that in this entire exercise first one should uh, first uh, design this phi of x because without that it uh, will not proceed further, but that is uh, anyway there actually uh, for for this method to start the phi of x should be should be designed actually first. Okay, this what you are assuming here that uh, there exists a feedback law for, for xi equal to phi of x with phi of 0 0. So, that has to be designed first. Okay. Then you design this u and all that. So, let us see a simple example again uh, like x 1 dot is uh, the same example probably what you go back if instead of u we will put x 2 and then x 2 dot equal to u that is how we will make it a second order system. So, that it is compatible with the theory that we discussed. So, ultimate objective here is u has to be designed. So, that overall system becomes asymptotically stable. Now, we have already designed x 2 before and uh, let us repeat that exercise one more time. So, we will tell okay, you will consider x 2 as a control variable for the first equation and then we will uh, we'll, I mean either you go ahead and, and put this entire uh, like we identify which one is what and just plug into the formula and get the answer or you can start from the beginning and get the answer either actually. So, so you have this v 1 of x is, is like that first of all you have to find a phi for finding that you will take v 1 is half x 1 square and v 1 dot is like that and it should be less than equal to some v a of x 1 and uh, following that previous uh, example that we started with the same example will take x 1 square plus x 1 fourth which will not cancel out the, the good nonlinearity part of it. So, we will keep it that way and hence we will uh, we'll cancel out all the thing and design this this x 2 which is earlier we designed it as a u, but this time it is is x 2 basically. So, this uh, this turns out to be phi of x 1. So, that is how we got phi of x 1 actually. Now, we will go back and uh, modify the system dynamics we have to write. So, we will add and subtract and things like that. So, we will uh, we'll, uh, write this x 1 dot in this form and where this z dot is v and v is defined as u minus phi dot. So, that way we will we'll define actually. Okay. So, we have to take this v as v 1 of x 1 plus half z square again that is following the same theory that we just discussed actually okay, here. So, we will put that uh, the same idea back in here tell ok v is v 1 of x 1 plus half z square. So, v dot is nothing but v 1 dot plus z times v z times z dot z dot is v anyway. So, that is what that is what it is this entire algebra gives us like this and then we will tell ok this uh, v has to be when I mean, this algebra whatever you see here v has to be mm, minus uh, del v 1 by del x 1 minus k z square. Okay. So, that I mean minus k z basically. So, that is what it is. So, if you put it back and try to solve for your control, so v is nothing but u minus phi dot. So, u equal to phi dot minus x 1 minus k, but phi dot is nothing but del phi by del x 1 into x 1 dot, x 1 dot is like that minus x 1. So, minus x 1 minus k times that. So, minus k times that. 
okay, phi of x 1 is, is that way anyway. So, you now you expand all the things algebra and then get a controller of that form actually. Okay. So, this k becomes a gain value which is positive number which needs to be tuned for your good performance basically. So that is uh, that is how an, how an example actually. Okay. So, what is the associated Lyapunov function for this? Uh, the composite Lyapunov function turns out to be V 1 plus half z square. So, V 1 is uh, obviously already there and z square is nothing but z is by definition okay, u minus phi, phi dot sort of thing right. Uh, no, that is z dot sorry. Okay. So, z, z is nothing but uh, this uh, uh, what is that? That that definition. So okay, this one, x two minus phi of x one. So that is that that's z. So we put uh, x two minus phi of x one. So that's uh, that part of it. So this is the compositely upon a function for the total system actually. Okay, first part is only for the first equation. When you put the second one, it becomes the upon a function for the total system actually. Now, more general case. So, this is all about like uh, we have this this type of system dynamics to we started with. Uh, Okay, this is the foundation stone anyway. So, we started with where x is n dimensional state and one more state is there z dot and that is equal to u. So, that is that is how we started with. What about more general case actually? So, when you take more general case and all, so, so this uh, this all happens to be uh, not that difficult at all. So, you take okay, this let us consider this one as a natural extension actually. We have xi 1 here where xi 1 dot is i 2 and then xi 2 dot is u. Okay. So, obviously, the idea is successive iteration actually. Like if you consider only this system first, the first two equations first, once you are done with that you will get as i 2 and then you consider okay, this first subsystem is 1 and then you add one more i 2 dot is u. Okay. So, successively you have to, uh, you have to design two times actually okay. and this if is the system dynamics is analogous that means let us say the system sequence does not stop here, but it is like xi 2 dot is xi 3, xi 3 dot is xi 4 and xi 4 dot is xi 5 like that and then somewhere let us say xi 10 dot is u like that. So, you have to repeat the exercise uh, like uh, like 10 times actually. All right. Now, so, we concentrate only on this okay. So, where you talk about uh, this xi uh, 2 dot is u and then let us see what happens actually. So, first we will consider only the first two equations okay. For the first two equations we have just done everything. This first is uh, like xi 1 and for that xi 1 uh, phi of is uh, like exists already and we have to design something like xi 2 considering the these two equations together. So, we will proceed the exactly same thing that we just discussed and we will tell okay, this uh, this v 1 okay, the corresponding Lyapunov function is available, the i 1 can be done the way we just discussed actually. So, then we will take okay, by, by the time by the way that we just I mean uh, so, this this part of it. Okay. So, uh, we just do that. So, so the analogous I mean the, the, the inference is we can directly write xi 2 instead of worrying about all the derivation one more time. So, let us write xi 2 and xi 2 ha has to be in this form okay. del phi by del x into x dot minus this this term minus that term and all that actually. Okay. So, that is available and also have a composite Lyapunov function for this to for this system which is like v 1 plus this one that also we just discussed. Now, what about extending to one more actually? So, if you want to extend this step, this is about step one sort of thing okay, that we just derived. Now, about step two, you have to consider this uh, this uh, this one more state into the picture basically. So, we will tell okay, the, this this state is first of first state is like that, first system first subsystem is like this, and then we are adding one more xi 2 dot equal to u. Okay, so, you consider this part of it is something like uh, f 1 of x 1, where x 1 is x n zeta 1, I mean, so xi 1 together and then tell okay, there is a xi 2 term here. So, I will put it there that way actually. Okay. So, x 1 dot is, is this expression. So, f 1 of uh, x 1 plus uh, g 1 of x 1 times xi 2. So, x 1 by definition is like that. So, this ex this expression what is what is here the first part of it I will just change it uh, the definition is x 1 instead of x. So, it is x 1 dot is whatever is there in the first equation then xi 2 dot is u. So, then again we know what to how to how to do it. So, we will do this algebra again and then tell okay u now becomes like that actually. Okay. So, entire big expression what we operated here instead of x we will have to operate it based on x 1 dynamics actually and v 2 v is to be v 2 plus xi 2 minus phi 1 of x 1. Okay. So, that, that has to be carefully noted actually. 
okay. and this phi 1 happens to be all that by the way this entire thing is phi 1. Okay. So, long end algebra is, is a necessity in this approach anyway. So, you have to have you should not get uh, I mean impatient with this algebra and all that. Uh, but uh, essentially it is lot more bookkeeping rather than too much difficulty actually. If you once you understand the one or two steps then it is just extensions uh, of that same idea basically. So, we have this and then put it back here and then tell okay, using the same idea we will get a u and the composite Lyapunov function for the entire system that means this system together okay, x dot xi 1 dot and xi 2 dot happens to be like that. And as I told before, this this uh, this is actually not very uh, unrealistic because if you see this uh, xi one is control okay, the, to the original plant, but this second this is like a second order actuator dynamics. Okay. First order actuator dynamics is what we we thought I mean we just discussed in this uh, first part of the uh, thing. If we have a first order actuator dynamics that will happen that way. If you have a second order lecture dynamics that will that I mean the two equations that will happen that way actually. So, this is this will be augmented to the system dynamics. You want to design a robust actuator input and all that. So, then, then this is the procedure one of the procedures that is available to you is backstepping actually. Okay, so, we will go there and then uh, uh, we okay this is about that and then we talk about okay what is the best generalization that you can have this this approach actually. The best generalization turns out to be in the strict feedback systems and all those things that we discussed are subsets of that anyway. So, strict feedback system is something like this, you have x dot is like that, zeta 1 I mean sorry xi, xi 1 dot is like this where xi 2 is an input, xi 2 dot is like this where xi 3 is an input like that it will continue to uh, some arbitrary or uh, arbitrary order k basically. So, if it happens like that uh, and there is a very strong assumption here by the way, what it tells you is all these functions that you are looking at not the first one, but starting from g 1, g 2 up to g k all these functions are certainly not equal to 0 over the entire domain of interest for all time I mean that is actually a very strong assumption, but with that assumption we should be able to solve it actually. Okay. So, what is the whole idea here? I mean, we will not worry so much about this this functional dependency and all. Let us consider only this uh, first, uh, I mean, first two terms sort of thing. Then, this uh, whatever is a whatever is appearing here f1 plus z1 times i2, I will simply define it as some sense something like a, a new variable sort of thing. So, let us consider only that part of it. So, x dot, x dot is f plus uh, z times i, where z dot is f a plus z a times u. Okay, so, that way. Then what you, what you are defining is this is i dot is, is v and you carry out all the algebra because once the i dot is v we know how to do it. And ultimately once you have we are done with v you can extract uh, uh, u from that actually, but this is by definition v. So, this is equal to v. So, then if I solve it for u that this simply an algebraic equation anyway. So, I will simply go ahead and solve for u basically. So, once I solve for u this is uh, this is the expression that I will end up with actually. And I can do that because by assumption g a is not equal to 0 anyway. Okay. So, that is uh, that is anyway there actually. Okay. So, with that I think uh, we will uh, I mean I thought uh, this this topic uh, I, I given sufficient exposure for anybody to work with this uh, this backstepping ideas and all that. So, you can see one of the ideas that we do we, we use for uh, I mean this analysis tool which is Lyapunov theory before you have seen how it is useful for, for neuro adaptive design. Now, this class you have seen how it is useful in backstepping design directly actually and ideas various ideas do pop up in the literature where you can uh, think of uh, uh, let us say use that for in, a, in a observer setting also like how do you design observers based on Lyapunov theory. Okay. So, it is a very generic tool where you can think of uh, exploiting that for, for design purposes as well actually. Okay. So, with that uh, exposure uh, I think I will proceed to a different topic now and then uh, we will rest of the time we will talk about uh, that actually. All right. So, this, uh, this topic is a linear quadratic observer. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, what you have seen before in that uh, I mean some time back is uh, this pole placement type of observer where this is this was valid for a single input system and all. The moment it was multiple input and all there is lot of ambiguity confusion and all that how do you do that and there are suggestions and all that, but then it is not very unique way of doing things. 
So, this, this particular observer design is uh, it does not uh, is not restricted to that in other words you can have multiple uh, input system for the control design and hence for the dual system you have multiple outputs also. So, the, the pole placement type of observer is valid for only single output system whereas, this LQ observer is valid for multiple output system directly basically. So, you can have a uh, number of measurements uh, many basically that is the advantage that you talk about LQ observer. Second bigger advantage is this gives us a platform to develop towards Kalman filter which is even more elegant actually. Okay. Having said that you can also note that this LQ observer is actually nothing but a Kalman filter. So, a, a special Kalman filter sort of thing you can think about and then hence even if you have uh, this noise input in the system then also it, uh, it is capable of filtering it out actually. Okay. So, we will see that a uh, little bit glimpse of that uh, because I thought uh, without uh, this exposure of LQ observer uh, and little bit of Kalman filter at least no control theory uh, course I is complete actually because most of the time we, we have to use some form of observer or filter like that actually. So, let us see what is going on here. So, why observers? We have seen this before that uh, the state feedback control designs uh, need the state information for control computation. And in practice all states uh, may not be available and possible reasons can include uh, let us say sensors are not available, sensors can be very expensive sensor and quality of the sensors may not be acceptable due to uh, the, the noise content in that also. So, you probably do if you are given a choice you will not want to use that, uh, that sensor actually. So, what do you what is an alternative? Let us say we use limited sensors which are of good quality anyway. Uh, and then rest of the states we want to kind of have an estimate of that based on those measurements in a sequential manner actually. I mean you will take measurements uh, multiple times and from them uh, from, from that information we want to observe or we want to estimate what, what should be my state and things like that actually. So, what is an observer? An observer is nothing but a dynamic system whose output or uh, I mean output of the observer is an estimate of the state vector itself actually. Okay. So, that is what uh, you are primarily bothered, bothered about estimate of the state vector x. Obviously, observer can be a full order reduced order things like that uh, these are uh, I mean topics of further discussion and things like that we will not talk about that we will simply confine ourselves to full order observer even in this class actually. Okay. Now, also remember that before talking an observer, the observability condition is a must actually and it is also true for filter designs as well. If the system is uh, not having observability property, then uh, we cannot design an observer really. Okay. So, that means we really need extra additional sensors, uh, some information that we cannot capture using limited sensors and all that actually. All right. So, observability condition must be there and we are interested in full order observer and we are interested in linear quadratic observers I mean that is the objective here actually. So, let us see what is uh, what we are interested in here. So, let us plant is uh, is x dot is x plus b the all that I am talking about is linear systems again actually. So, we uh, talk x dot is x plus b u and y equal to c x. Okay. So, the this is a nothing but the sensor output vector. So, sensor whatever sensors you are getting that you are writing is as a linear uh, equation y equal to c x. And the let the observed state be x right and the observer dynamics okay, that is what you have to want to have an estimate. So, that is that let denote that is x right and x right dot is nothing but that actually that is almost same thing as that x plus v u plus k e y, but this plus k e y is an additional term that you are interested to put in there. So, that is how we will uh, will in, will inject uh, sensor information into the dynamics actually. So, what is our objective? X right should go to x uh, as soon as possible. So, so when I define this error x tilde is x minus x right that means x tilde should go to 0 basically ok that is the thing. And remember in a, when you are talking about observer we are not talking about any any noise in the system. So, we neither, neither process noise is there in the system dynamics nor sensor noise is there ok. So, in that setting we are just uh, talking that only we are telling that all states uh, I mean are not uh, available from the sensors uh, from that we will uh, we'll try to estimate something actually. So, when you define error like that, so obviously the error dynamics is also associated with that. So, x tilde dot is x dot minus x i dot, so you x dot is x plus v u, x i dot is that we just put it there and then do this simplified algebra. So, you can do this add and subtract this i tilde x and, and things like that, you will end up with something like this. 
Okay. Now, we have something when you have something like this obviously, we do not want to see I mean given a choice if it is possible we do not want to see this uh, this error dynamics as a function of original state and original control. So, you want to see the error dynamics as a function of error itself primarily. So, if you if you can do that that is the best actually and uh, because because these coefficients are available probably we can do that actually because we have never selected what is uh, so far you have not told what is ahead and what is behead. So, this will actually give us a platform to actually tell what is ahead and what is V8 because we will we'll make sure that the coefficients go to 0 that we will get B equal to V8 and A8 equal to A minus KEC. But as a byproduct of that as a good byproduct in fact uh, the objective of what we wanted that means that the error dynamics is a function of error itself is happening actually. So, it is uh, now decoupled from, from X and U because uh, X can be large and X tilde can be small similarly U can be large X tilde can be small there will be lot of numerical compatibility issues and all that will be avoided actually. So, we by doing that so what we are telling this coefficients have to be 0. So, the once we have this coefficients 0 this results in a, a, a hat is nothing but A minus K E C that is what it is and V hat is nothing but V. Okay. So, once you have this then you go back to this system this observer dynamics and tell okay, now A hat is nothing but A minus K E C and V hat is V. So, let me put it back and then once I put it back I get something like this right. So, A x, x hat dot is A x A x hat plus B u plus K E times Y minus C x hat and this Y is your actual uh, like sensor output and C x hat is estimated sensor output. That means, y minus C x hat is also called innovation residual and thing like that actually. That so, this is the y minus C x hat is that, that part of it is, is called uh, typically it is called innovation actually okay, in the filtering setup. But so that is that is the extra error information that you are giving to the filter dynamics or the, or the observer dynamics to get it uh, get some better estimate of the state basically. Right. So, what, you, what is your uh, what is our interest here? Now, if you go back to the error dynamics part of it our, obje our objective was this should go to 0 right I mean that is the primary objective we have this should go to 0 as soon as possible. That means, uh, why if I see this uh, this residual error dynamics then that error dynamics would be asymptotically stable actually. Okay. So, that is what I will do here and tell okay, what is my residual error dynamics this x tilde dot is now uh, a hat x hat remember that that is only this part is left out and a hat is nothing but uh, a minus k e c. So, what I am left out with a minus k e c actually. So, that is my error dynamics okay. Now, let us go back and see what is uh, what we have done in the LQ control design that is linear quadratic control design using LQ R theory and all that. There uh, if, if you have designed a controller in such a way that the closed loop system dynamics happen to be like this this x dot equal to a minus b k times x and here is the closed loop system dynamics uh, error dynamics in fact which is like x tilde dot equal to a minus k e c times x tilde. Here the objective was to make sure that x goes to 0 as t goes to infinity here also the same object x tilde goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. So, almost very parallel to what you have seen there actually. Okay. But the only difference is this k appears to be in the right hand side here, but where this k e appears to be left hand side here actually. Okay. K e stands for uh, let us say estimated uh, gain actually, I mean gain of the estimator basically. Okay. So, to avoid this problem uh, what you what you uh, what we note is that okay, any this particular matrix all that we want is uh, this is Hurwitz that means the Eisen value of this matrix has to be all in the left hand side. And you see if I really in, I am interested in only in the Eisen values then I can very well visualize the transpose of this matrix as well. Now, if I visualize the transpose of this matrix this matrix is nothing but a transpose minus uh, this transpose will now change this uh, order. So, it will have C transpose K E transpose. So, what is what to what appeared uh, what happens I mean what appears in the left hand side now appears in the right hand side and hence the problem is uh, is compatible provided we interpret this A as A transpose here and this B happens to be C transpose. So, A is equivalent to A transpose, B is equivalent to C transpose, then K E transpose is something that is equivalent to our kind of uh, controller gain actually. So, this is anyway that is compatible uh, with uh, what we call as dual systems and all. We have all discussed about this uh, dual system dynamics when we are discussing about controllability, observability uh, and observer and all that actually there. And those of you have forgotten you can you can revise those lectures to see what what were those actually. Okay, so, this is the observation. So, in, in control design we have uh, come up with something like a closed loop system dynamics like this objective was like that 
observable design that we are talking here is the closed loop system dynamics is like this objective is also like that to make sure that the gain appears in the right hand side you visualize the transpose problem and the transpose problem happens to be like that actually so now we, we go back and see uh, something like a like this dual system idea that i just talked about so you talk okay as a summary something like the system is uh, original system is uh, like this the dual system that we visualize is something like that now if you see the controllability matrix and observability matrix here and similar things here then the, then the controllability matrix turns out to be observability matrix here and and vice versa observability matrix here turns out to be controllability matrix okay so instead of designing a, like a, another observer or something what you do, what you really do is we design a controller for the dual system actually and that that will become an observer for the actual system anyway so the lqr design we already know how to do it u equal to minus kx so using this philosophy we will be able to directly derive a, a gain for the filter i mean the fill for the observer so let's go back to that so this is the closed loop system dynamics and this gain that we are talking here was designed as something like r inverse b transpose p where p positive p is a positive definite matrix which comes out as a i mean which is found from the solution of the algebraic required equation okay so this required equation like that Similarly, error analog system we see here. This is uh, like transpose and all. This acts like a controller gain, as I told. And this controller gain uh, can be directly written as something like this. Remember, R inverse B transpose is equivalent to like uh, B transpose equivalent to C. So we'll put C, and this P is P. But the P is uh, is the solution of of observer Ricard, Ricard equation, not the controller Ricard equation. Basically, okay. So you you see that uh, I mean equivalent system, but whatever a transpose, e transpose, b transpose that we have, we can we can plug in back here and then tell okay this is what what should happen actually. So this this type this uh, this type of uh, like uh, I mean this equation is called uh, I mean filter Ricard equation or observer Ricard equation either way. So you get a solution of uh, this uh, system dynamics. Okay, uh, sorry this uh, Ricard equation. And then whatever solution you get, you put it back. That will become your KE transpose. It's it's no more K KE. But if you take the transpose of that, you get KE basically. So once you get KE, this is your observer dynamics. So this observer dynamics can be propagated. And as you propagate, uh, it will ensure it will ensure that x tilde goes to zero, and hence uh, x x hat will go to x actually. So that's that's how it operates actually. So this is that algebraic Ricard equation based observer design. So it's nothing but LQ observer design. Linear quadratic theory is coming into picture. Basically. And this particular idea that we just just discussed can be extended to uh, this Kalman filter design in the in the linear uh, time invariant system case uh, in the continuous time case actually. So very quickly we'll see some uh, a summary sort of thing here. What it tells is okay system dynamics is something like this. Now it is AX plus BU plus GW. And y is nothing but c x plus v, and this w and v are are process. I mean, w is process noise and v is sensor noise, and they are vectors in general and things like that. And there are bunch of assumptions here, which tells that okay, this uh, first of all, this w and v has to be like zero mean. The first is zero. That means zero mean, and then they have to be like uh, mutually orthogonal. They have to be white noise and things like things like that. W and v are uncorrelated white noise actually. Okay. They they are not correlated to, to each other, and they are uh, like uh, white noise definition. If you see, they are uh, I mean this. Uh, I mean there's something called uh, this uh, white noise property and all that. They have to be satisfied. I will not talk too much detail in this lecture, but just remember that uh, they have to be uh, like white noise actually. Okay. And then it also talks about like when I talk about W W transpose and then take expected value, it will have only Q there. Remember, this is a little bit translated in the time actually. So, if I take only the same time, I'll get some value. If I have any difference in time, that will not that will be that will be zero actually. So delta delta definition is like that. So, similarly for v also there actually. Okay. So, all these definitions intact, all these uh, assumptions. We, I mean, with all these assumptions, we are still putting the objective that okay, let us estimate x at so that the error goes to zero actually as t goes to infinity. Now can we do that? So the entire derivation, I will not uh, do it anything out of that here. But let us see in the in the summary sense. This uh, this is something very pro parallel to what we have done before. We will still take an estimator dynamics. Okay, 
and uh, here with this ke is called kalman gain actually or estimator gain or filter gain whatever you can talk about exactly same is what we discussed in the in the observer actually Obser whatever observer equation is there it is uh, same as that actually by the way this is x, x hat actually okay. x hat okay. okay so that is exactly same as what you have discussed actually okay now you tell okay this x hat is e expected now x hat what you are talking actually not the directly the same state or something now it will have uh, estimate of the state itself what you call as expected value of x expected value is like like an average value for for uh, many measurements i mean many cases and all if you take a uh, lot of uh, this values and all then take average and thing average value then that is nothing but expected value so all the thing that we are discussing here is in the estimated value sense uh, sorry expected value sense that means the average value sense basically then similarly the y hat will be expected value of y and then when you put y is nothing but cx plus p and then you know the expected value is a linear operator so you can separate it out and then c will come out and then this is zero by definition the expected value this is zero mean actually both w and v are zero mean so they, that will uh, that will make sure that expected value of v is zero so you end up with y hat is nothing but cx hat actually okay so whatever y hat you are talking here nothing but cx hat okay so very similar to what you have done before so uh, only difference is this x hat is expected value of state now is is no more a deterministic value so the question here is we know the system i mean the the filter dynamics now how do you design this ke and that part i will not talk anything here but the summary turns out to be like that you design ke exactly like what you have done before what this p that the ricardi matrix will be a solution of that okay and if you see this this uh, the only difference that we see here compared to this uh, this equation is if you see this equation and this equation okay the only difference is this part actually so earlier the, there was no g here and g transpose there now it has actually so if you assume that uh, this system dynamics has g as identity okay then that is nothing but the the, the lq observer is nothing but the kalman filter with the assumption that g is identity okay so that is the, that's the, that's how it operates so what is the what's the thing here so we have a filter dynamics like this which we need to propagate so we initialize something and start propagating but in the but we need a gain value here ke so ke can be computed that way but what in this expression we need a p so p can be computed from this equation so you have to implement it then implementation sense has to be something like this you first initialize x at 0 then solve for this uh, p matrix from this uh, this ricard equation once you get a p matrix you compute the gain filter gain once you get the gain you know the filter dynamics anyway the filter dynamics and you initial your initial condition is available so simply propagate this equation forward in time itself and it will all make sure that your uh, error goes to uh, zero in an expected value sense actually now so your mean will go to zero and then you will get a i mean your noise will get filtered out and things like that actually okay so this is all happening in the this all happens in the continuous time uh, linear time invariant system kalman filter theory it has gone much more beyond that we talk about discrete time implementation then continuous discrete time continuous time system propagation and discrete time measurement implementation this uh, continuous discrete version then there are extensions uh, to make it operate uh, for the non linear system that is uh, that is external kalman filter and things like that actually so these are all available So, but uh, also remember that without knowing this, uh, some of these estimation uh, estimation theory, the control design is perhaps uh, slightly kind of incomplete actually. So I will I'll encourage all of you to study further in this this field and then get comfortable with all that actually. So with that, I will stop this uh, this lecture. Thank you.